Hi, so I decided to buy a GoPro. This is it right here. And there's different versions of the GoPro. This is actually the Session Hero 5. So this is like a smaller version of the one that you're normally used to seeing. And the nice thing about this one is I can stick it in all sorts of different locations and it's nice and slim. Like it's literally, I mean you can kind of see you know, the size of my hand. It's, it's very small. Let's see if I have something better to... Actually yeah, I do have something. A caliper. So let's see here. I can tell you right now how big it is. So it's about a 36 millimeter like this and then it's a little bit more than say 45 millimeters. So it's it's pretty small actually. So you can stick it in all sorts of different locations. It's kind of it's kind of fine like that. And it has a rather wide angle view and it also has a pretty decent focal point so you don't have to worry about focusing. You can just kind of stick it somewhere and then hit record and it'll just go. And to make it actually record, it's actually real simple. You just press here. If I press the button once, it's recording right now. So I can actually turn it off. So if you want to stop the recording, you just hit the power button again. It'll stop recording and then it'll turn off. Now there's different ways of using it. You can use the app, which I'm not a fan of because it wants me to turn on my location services. It wants me to turn on and all sorts of stuff. Most phone apps these days are garbage. They just want to spy on you. That's all they're designed for. I just hate using phone apps. The idea behind apps is great. The execution is terrible. And it's not just GoPro that does this. It's pretty much every company. So anyway, so back to this. So without using the app, you can actually more or less use this decently. So if you want to do a time lapse, I just hold about three seconds. And now it's in time lapse mode. So right now it's taking it two pictures per second and it's at 4K so it's decent quality. Actually I think it's that 4K, let me see here. Oh yeah, 30 frames per second, 4K, wide which is like the standard format. And what's nice is that it has this little LCD here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I don't think you actually can. But basically with that tiny LCD it can actually give you decent amount of information on what's going on. So. You don't really need the app, everything you need is on this here, which is nice. And if I hit the power button again, it'll stop the time lapse. And in this mode, the time lapse is actually going to create a video file. So I don't have to stitch all the pictures together, it's already done for me. So that's actually what's nice. Now there's different settings you can do where it just takes a bunch of pictures and then you stitch it manually, or you can set the interval differently, like 1 second or 15 seconds or whatever. But for me, I prefer just make make it 500 millisecond per interval, and then it just creates a video. And if I want it faster, I can just speed it up in my editing program. So I like the setting. And then there's a menu which is not exactly intuitive, but if you play around with it, you can kind of figure out what's going on. And without even using the app, you can change the defaults. So I can change the default for when I push the button, and then I can set the default for when I hold it down for three seconds basically the type of time lapse I want and the settings I want. So it's kind of nice that at least it lets you do that so you don't even need the app. I had the app on my phone when I played around with it. With the app it's nice because you can see what the camera sees. Without the app you can't do that. But like I said it's just annoying because they wanted me to turn on location, they wanted me to turn on this and that and I figured you know what it's probably like any other app where it just wants to spy on everything I'm doing so I just got rid of it. It kept nagging me for stuff. Oh I just stepped on my cat's tail by accident there. It's okay. Yeah, anyway, so it kept nagging me even when I wasn't using the app, it was giving me errors and stuff and I just gave up with it. It might have been user error, I don't care. I just I just got rid of it. So without the app I can still use it. And what's nice is this uses a micro SD card. So by the way, this video wasn't really meant to be a review, it kinda of turned into one I guess. Let's kinda of figure to talk about it in a bit. So yeah, so you could put the SD card in here and then there's also a USB. Now it uses some kind of proprietary USB connector. I've never actually seen it before. But what's nice about this connector is that it doesn't matter which way it put it in. I can put it in like this. Or I can turn it around. Turn it around like this. And it still goes in. So yeah, it's kind of nice. I mean, I wish the USB standard would actually do this. but So... 
downside is if you lose this cable, it's probably going to cost you a lot. So you don't want to lose this cable. Also, you can use it, obviously, you can use that cable to charge it as well. Now, here's where it, I don't like, is if you want to transfer the pictures, you pretty much have to take the SD card out. You can hook up USB to the computer and it will work. But for some reason, it's flaky, it's very slow. The files show up as if they were corrupted, even though they're not. So, I don't use a USB transfer, I just take the SD card out and put it out. And this SD card is it's a pretty decent sized one actually. I bought this one separately. It does not come with a micro SD. I still think it's crazy that it can cram 64 gigabytes of space into the, something this small. I mean, it's incredible. And this is not the biggest ones you can get. You can get them like way bigger than this. I think they're up to like, are they in a the terabyte range now? I think they are. It, it's crazy. I mean, like, just look at the size of this thing. It's just, it blows my mind, really. Sometimes we take technology for granted. Okay, so, oh, and another thing I bought too is this little tripod here, which is kind of nice. You know, you can kind of extend it. That's the whole idea why I got this GoPro. I just wanted to be able to stick this somewhere, get some footage. It won't be my main camera. I mean, the quality is decent, but it's not the best. So it's great for like secondary video. And then most of the other reviews I've seen is they talk about the sound not being that great. And it's kind of hard to make good sound on something like this. This isn't designed for, it's an action camera. So it's designed to be closed. This thing apparently can go underwater. I haven't tested it and I'm kind of scared, but apparently it can go underwater. So I mean, try making a microphone that's good and something that's sealed. It's just, you can't, I mean, you can, I guess, but the engineering involved would be pretty hard. So yeah, so anyway, enough talking. So this video was actually about showing just a couple tests things. So the first test is I use the picture mode where it takes a picture every so many seconds. I can't remember what I had set it to. I think it was 15 seconds. So 15 second intervals, I was taking a picture. And then I put that in a computer program and then I, I loaded them all into a video. And then the next video after that, it's actually in video mode. I figured that picture mode would be better quality, but you know what? I actually prefer the video mode and that's good because it's it's actually less work for me. I don't have to stitch all the pictures together. It just comes out of the SD card and boom, it's there. So that's what's kind of nice. So anyway, so here's a couple test shots.